on the East Coast, so um, welcome everybody to the Croatia webinar that's being hosted by Viatours, um, which is a Croatian DMC that True Marketing represents here in North America. Uh, thank you again for spending your time with us. I think what you'll find today is a very unique presentation um, led by the managing director of Viatours himself, so he's on the line and he's going to be giving you quite a bit of sales tools um, on selling Croatia, which happens to be really one of the hottest destinations at the moment, one of the easiest to sell, and also certainly one of the most profitable. Um, so he's going to walk you through some key selling points and also information on how Viator's is, is extremely travel agent friendly, how they can help you and how we can help you here be a resource to you to help you close more sales, to help you get better educated on the destination um, and all that. So with that, I will turn it over to Zvonimir, who is on the line again. He, um, he heads up Viator's, which has uh, you know an office here and then in the United States and also is based in Croatia with the head office. Um, so you've kind of got uh, great access to the team no matter which time of the day, no matter which time zone you're in. So with further ado, I will turn it over to him and he will begin the webinar. Hello everyone, uh, thank you Gabriella for this uh, beautiful introduction. Um, I would like to welcome everybody uh, to this webinar. I hope you will uh, find it to be very useful. Um, we turned a, bit, a little bit from direct selling into more um, helping travel agents uh, to actually promote Croatia in the right way and then make this sale. So we are very uh, helpful lately to travel agents um, helping them sell the destination which is actually becoming very very popular among um, United States travelers. Um, I will begin with a little bit of introduction um, about ourselves and about our company. Uh, so we, we started in 2003 actually my mother started this company so we've been in the business for over 13 years. Uh, we we worked we worked mostly uh, we worked mostly with with European market. Uh, however, last uh, last two years we've been focusing more on the United States and Canadian market as well. Um, we opened up an office in Cincinnati and the United States. We operate strictly and, and exclusively to travel agents. Um, a little bit about why um, we believe that we bring that extra value um, to, to the travel agents who are actually trying to sell to sell Croatia. Um, like I said, we are internationalized. We have offices in both Croatia and the United States, uh, which is very convenient uh, for the travel agents to use our services during the booking process. If we really help them go through this booking process, explain travel uh, travelers what exactly they're going to be seeing, uh, how long is the trips in between. We also uh, jump on the conference calls a lot of times with with the travel agents and uh, their clients to under to, so they can better understand the whole itinerary. Um, we do uh, offer highly competitive rates and commissionable rates. Uh, our starting commissions are 15%, uh, but then again for uh, higher producing agents and higher producing travel agencies, we do have incentive program which is fully customized uh, depending on the partner. Uh, all the payments are processed in the US, in the US dollars. Um, there is no hidden fees for credit cards, uh, no fees for the international transactions, uh, which is really helpful and, and clients feel more safely paying in US, in US dollars than sending money abroad. Um, we do offer a fast and knowledgeable travel agent support. Um, I will also go through our new travel agent portal at the end of this presentation so you can understand what is what is it bringing exactly to to all the to all the travel agents. Um, for for clients that travel to Croatia we, we found it to be very helpful our concierge service um, so we assign a host to each of your travelers and they have 24 hours access whatever they need if they need to change the itinerary if they need to uh, make a reservation in a restaurant if they need any suggestions they can just give it a call to our uh, to our people and they will be gladly uh, there to help them and assist them in any possible way um, also we do have strong local connections uh, so some of the services that we provide um, 
they can the clients cannot see and find online which is very very good for you uh, as you are bringing the extra value uh, and they cannot compare the rates because those services are not easily available online so they cannot be found on via uh, or TripAdvisor or any of these online travel agency sites um, what we do just in short uh, so we're going to get going on uh, and more to talk about the destinations so we do fits mostly that's 90 percent of our business our boat charters are increasing lately so we do sailboats catamarans and gullets if you have if you have a, pr a private groups and we do yachts for uh, luxury clients as well uh, we do small groups uh, and bigger groups uh, our best-selling tours are definitely food and wine uh, we do shore excursions for people who are attending and going to cruises in Croatia and also uh, we do special interest tours such as uh, we thematize the tours in active adventure honeymoon religious and history and culture tours as well um, just another thing that we started two years ago since Croatia it's uh, it's very big on food and wine uh, in 2014, we started the association which we called Crolicious. We, we, we came uh, to that name by by putting together Delicious and Croatia into Crolicious. Uh, and we gathered around 20 local wineries and farms and that, that number is rising every day. Uh, but we, we try and organize really exclusive and nice activities such as the grape harvest, uh, olive harvest, so they can take home their olive oil. We do a lot of cooking classes, whether in the farm, the restaurant, on a yacht. It really, anything that, that, that you can think of in regards of food and wine, we can definitely do it. And people absolutely love these activities once they travel to Croatia. Uh, just a very, very nice selling point to actually start a promotion with Croatia as Travel and Leisure magazine and the readers decided um, to vote for Croatia to be the best destination of the 2016 and um, like I said there is a there is over 30% increase in in uh, in, in travelers from the United States to Croatia so there is a huge increase and a huge interest of Croatia as a destination which is your great opportunity to offer this product um, offer your knowledge and our knowledge together as a team and we can definitely put together nice programs uh, and and help you sell the destination uh, and give the selling points to your clients that they will absolutely love so it, it can be a much easier sell um, so we are starting about Croatia by by fun facts that I put together um, how is actually Croatia shaping today's world uh, the, the necktie, the cravat, um, was actually invented in Croatia and we are all wearing it today, all the business world is wearing it. Uh, the mechanical pencil we are using today was also invented in Croatia. Nikola Tesla, uh, who invented the alternative current, who we all use today in our businesses and homes, um, he was born in Croatia. Uh, Marco Polo, the world famous traveler, was born in Croatia on the island of Korčula. Also, parachute was invented in, in Croatia by Faust Vrancic. Uh, fingerprint recording system was also invented in Croatia. And Croatia has the smallest city in the world, which is called Hun. Uh, it's in Istria region, which I will show you later on when we get to the map. So, just before we start into, into uh, going in more depth about the destinations and must-see places, I would like you to understand the map of, of this of whole Croatia. So if you look this map, uh, Zagreb, this is the capital, the capital city of Croatia. Um, he is well connected year-round with all the, all the major airports, airports uh, in Europe, Frankfurt, Paris, uh, Vienna. So these all are great connections which can be, uh, which can be seen year-round. Uh, then we have Istria region, Istrian Peninsula right here, which over the past was influenced by, by Italians and Venetians mostly. So we also call it a small Italy. It's right here and the airport is here in Pula. Then the next airport we have, this is already a Dalmatian region right here. It's Zadar, that's the next destination, that's the next airport we have. Then the next airport is in Split. And the next one is Dubrovnik, which is after Zagreb, probably the most the most used one uh, by our groups. Um, after we go through the destinations, I will also uh, I will also go back to the map and show you a couple sample itineraries and how we structure the trips for the clients even when they do a land tour as well. 
Uh, Croatian history actually goes back to Paleolithic era uh, when, when in Krapina near Zagreb we also, we also have a museum of Neanderthal men. Um, they were found over 100 tools, they were made out of bones, um, so they made a whole museum out of it. Uh, it's a museum showing the whole evolution of, of human beings from very, very early beginnings uh, all the way to today. So it's a very interactive a museum. It was also named to be one of the best uh, museums, uh, one of the best museums uh, in, in Europe two years ago. Um, then Croatia was, uh, Croatia is very diverse if you look at the different regions uh, because it was influenced by many different countries uh, such as Romans, uh, Venetians, Austro-Hungarians, Italian and Ottoman Emp Empire as well. So all these changes and all these different influences um, make Croatia so diverse because it was split in so many ways during the past. Uh, it was it was very uh, targeted region and territory for many uh, for many rulers because of its strategic position, the the closest to the Italy, uh, the Adriatic Sea and the coast, which was also used a lot of times for the battles over the past. So once you travel through Croatia, you can see these different influences in in architecture, in cultures, in food and in food and wine as well. So that's why it's very diverse and interesting. Uh, the newer history of Croatia goes back to civil war, uh, when Croatia was actually under when when Croatia was actually under the Yugoslavia. So in 1991, which is only 15, 16 years ago, we finally became independent republic. Um, that was unfortunately after after the big civil war that was going on between Croatia and Serbia, and that was from 1991 to 1995. Uh, Dubrovnik split. Uh, Shibenik and other very nice areas uh, got hit by that war, but fortunately enough, uh, we managed we managed to to fix these uh, these sites, and they're they're in very very good condition and shape in today's uh, when today travelers are going there. So there is very little sign of the war ever happening there. Uh, this is Croatia. Croatia in numbers, uh, we have eight national parks. We are very small. We have only 4.2 million people living there. We have eight UNESCO sites. We had seven all up until just a couple months ago when we got the eighth one as well. We have 11 nature park mark parks and we have uh, over 1200 islands in our Adriatic Sea. So when somebody asked why should somebody visit Croatia? First that comes to our mind, it's definitely untouched uh, nature and beautiful natural wonders which is, goes back to 11 uh, natural parks and to eight national parks that we have. I'm going to go through some of the pictures so you can see a couple of our national parks and sites that definitely are must-see. <coughs> this is the picture of uh, our most visited our most visited national parks. Uh, it's called Plitvice Lakes. It's, a, it's also a UNESCO protection site. Um, it consists of 16 interconnected lakes, which are all connected with a beautiful waterfalls. Um, the national park sits uh, two hours away from uh, two hours away from Zagreb, which is capital, and around two hours away from Zadar uh, in Dalmatia on the sea coast. So it makes a perfect day trip from either uh, Zadar or Zagreb. It really depends where your clients are traveling. The next one is National Park Mlet, uh, which is the greenest island in Croatia as well. Also, uh, also a national park. It's definitely beautiful, off the beaten path destination. If somebody wants to escape. Uh, the hustle and bustle and just be outside of the very crowded areas this is a very beautiful place to go for biking and any adventure and just enjoying the nature as well uh, national park Kornati, my favorite national park um, it's uh, over 100 little islands and islets and it's definitely it's called a sailor's paradise because uh, people are just going there every day just uh, enjoying the waters with the boats uh, there's a lot of uh, nice little restaurants on on the islands uh, with fresh seafood uh, it's a very beautiful uh, day escape and you can find many hidden bays beaches where you can just enjoy and be there by yourself uh, it's it's truly an amazing amazing experience uh, national park kirka uh, it's also it's 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 uh, it's it's coming from the river Kaka, uh, 
so it's not the legs like Plitvice legs, but it's uh, kind of like similar. Uh, we call it Plitvice in small, and this is the, the also the only national park where you can actually swim. So this is the waterfall under where people are actually going and, and swimming as well. So for somebody who wants that kind of experience, it's also possible. Uh, it is uh, our it's our way from Zadar and hour and a half away from from city of Split. So it's easily reachable from both destinations. Next, uh, next reason why should somebody visit Croatia? It's definitely its history. Like I said, we've been under under the many different influences over the past: uh, Austro-Hungarians, Venetians, uh, Romans, uh, Ottoman Empire. So all that left a huge impact on, on especially on our architecture, which you can see in many, many different. Uh, many many different cities and destinations uh, for example this is a Trakushan, Trakushan castle uh, the most beautiful castle of all in Croatia it's located 45 minutes away away from Zagreb which makes it a perfect day trip after that we connected with with a local farm and people just have a great experience uh, people can go in the city in in the actual castle uh, there is four levels of a castle that it that that are open for for the public and of course we would have a special guy taking them around the castle as well the next one it's a Frasian basilic in in Poric in Istria region uh, it is actually a basilic from from fourth century, um, when actually the whole Christianization started in that, in that region. So this is when the actual the, the monument actually comes from that area. Um, this is the Saint James Cathedral uh, in Šibenik. It's coming from around uh, 1431 and 1535. It's believed that it was built. Um, this is a perfect example of exchange in monumental arts. Uh, between Northern Italy, Dalmatia and Tuscany. Um, it's absolutely amazing, uh, amazing and it is very, very well preserved. Uh, UNESCO protected site and a uh, must-see place uh, if traveling to that part of Croatia, definitely. Uh, Trogir, um, this whole old town is actually under UNESCO protection as well. Uh, it is coming from Hellenistic period. Um, it, it, the, it, you can find a lot of Renaissance and, and Baroque buildings uh, from Venetian period. So it is very, uh, I would say, a romantic place. It's it's nearby to Split. So a lot of people don't want to stay in Split because it's a bigger city. Uh, it's not like a smaller Dalmatian city feel. Uh, so so a lot of people um, so a lot of people are just uh, staying in Trogir. Uh, staying in Trogir, which is uh, 45 45 minutes away, uh, 45 minutes away from the actual split. The next destination um, for definitely reach in in, in, in history is the Euclasian, the Euclasian Palace uh, in Split, uh, which is one of the biggest uh, monuments left from Roman Empire. Um, going back uh, two, three years, uh, maybe five, there's a lot of small boutique hotels uh, that are built inside of the Diocletian Palace, uh, four and five star. So a lot of people like to stay there. Uh, just when you're selling these properties, uh, we always like to to tell uh, to tell clients that, uh, that the actual rooms uh, were built with huge limitations, so they couldn't touch the walls and stuff like that. So the rooms are smaller most of the times, uh, but it still gives you that that special that special feeling and different different experience while being while being there in the Diocletian Palace itself, uh, and of course. Uh, the best destination of all, probably you've all heard of it, it's, it's Dubrovnik. Um, Dubrovnik and its city walls under UNESCO protection site and Dubrovnik as Dubrovnik um, was famous from 13th century onward when it became a big sea power and actually at some point of the time uh, Dubrovnik was actually a republic of itself as well. Next reason why should somebody visit uh, uh, visit Croatia is definitely it's food and wine. I'm sure you've all heard of Zinfandel, the Californian Zinfandel. Actually, uh, the Californian Wine Institute did the research and they found out that Zinfandel came from Kastela, which is right next to the city of Split. Uh, and uh, the actual grapes were brought to California uh, and uh, 
they couldn't figure out where is it from but they finally found uh, they finally found uh, the connection and they found the connection from Croatia so Zinfandel is coming from Croatia which is a very interesting fact as well uh, in our food you will see in Dalmatia especially a lot of Italian influence so you will see uh, a lot of seafood um, on the inland in continental part you will see a lot of Austro-Hungarian influence so you will see the salami you will see the goulash as well a lot of a lot of a lot of meals with cheese as well Istria region which I showed you uh, with the airport in Pula it's very famous for for its truffles and the olive oil as well so there's a, there's there are many activities where we take people truffle hunting after that we have a cooking classes with uh, with the olive oil tasting and also Istria region is very famous for its white wine called Malvasia as well like I said, uh, wine regions. Um, the, if you go more more south in Croatia, it's more about the red wine, and then if you go into Istria region, it's more about the white wine. So we have different wine regions as well, uh, which 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 uh, if you visit and you spend couple couple, if you spend more than a week in Croatia, you can visit different regions and try totally different wines, even though you are in the same country. The next. Um, reason why visit Croatia is definitely our Adriatic Sea uh, and our uh, our fact that we have over 1200 islands uh, we have one of the clearest seas in Croatia uh, in in the world at all uh, if you can see this is no filter photo uh, this is actually how crystal clear our water is um, I'm not sure you probably seen this in many magazine this is this is the beach called uh, Zlatni Rat uh, and it's one of the famous because uh, it's a sandy beach uh, which is kind of rare for Croatia because we have mostly rocky beaches uh, but then the final shape of the beach actually changes according to the wind and the waves so if you take a picture today it doesn't need to be the same uh, shape if you take it tomorrow because of the wind and the waves that are shaping shaping the beach which is pretty cool uh, this is another beach on island Brach just across the split as well and this is just a picture to show you how crystal clear and and just the color of, of our of our sea and what it is um, this is picture uh, taken from uh, from Pelješac Peninsula and it's looking over towards the Dubrovnik so this is the actual uh, amateur photo so this is uh, the color of the sea that actually is there the next um, I know for Americans especially they are very interested in adventure soft adventure active active vacation so there is there are many options uh, especially for example in Istria region there is uh, many ad adrenaline parks and adventure parks that are built lately um, we have a couple rivers that are very good for white water rafting uh, we have a lot of spots for for hiking and walking tours um, and of course kayaking kayaking is really big and of course due to many many islands that we have and the sailing trips are very very popular um, yes we do have uh, cruises that go in um, but definitely something different and, uh, and 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 totally different experiences to get your own boat um, with or without the captain if, if your clients have licenses they don't need to have captain they will just have to go through through the approval process and we can get them a boat whether it's a sailboat catamaran yacht it really depends on what uh, they would like and of course on their budget and just experiencing these islands on their own it's totally different adventure than being on a bigger cruise ship uh, and just uh, being dependent on on the actually set itinerary in stone uh, I would like to go quickly over the must-see must-see destinations uh, in Croatia. Uh, so these are all majority majority of them are bigger bigger cities. Um, so they're not off the beaten path. But for first time first time travelers, um, I would say these are the must-see places in Croatia. So first is of course uh, Dubrovnik, which is UNESCO protected site. The second must see place is definitely uh, Plitvice Lakes National Park, which we also mentioned in the reason why we visit Croatia as well. 
than Zagreb, which is capital, um, the capital city of Croatia. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people try don't go to Zagreb um, once they visit Croatia. But it's a really, um, it's a really nice city to visit. It has huge Austro-Hungarian uh, influence. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, especially you can see it in 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 the architecture. It's a very lively city. Uh, a lot of things to do. And also um, now, two years ago and and this year as well, the Zagreb was voted to be the best Christmas market destination. So for somebody who is traveling off the peak season and is one is, is traveling over the winter times, this is definitely a great destination to visit as well. Then the next city is Ravine. Uh, so a lot of our clients actually say when they travel to Croatia that this is the most beautiful city they've been to, uh, even even maybe better than, than Dubrovnik. Uh, it used to be a fisherman's uh, fisherman's city before. Now it, it is kind of a touristy place, but it has a very nice uh, boutique resort, very nice beaches, and the old town. It's really uh, really charming. Uh, this is the region that we also call this, the the whole region of Istria. Uh, we call it the Italy in small because it was under Italy. A lot of times, uh, a, a lot of years. I'm sorry, and um, and and this whole peninsula, uh, you can see a huge Italian influence. Even the schools are in in two languages. The kids can pick if they want to go to school in full Italian or they want to go in school in Croatian. So everybody speaks Italian, and you really feel like you're in Italy, um, and it's it's amazing region to go. Uh, the next uh, must see it's Poreč. Uh, remember, we talked about UNESCO sites and why visit because of the history. And Euphrasian Basilic uh, from fourth century was in, was in is in Poreč and was built in Poreč. So it's just near Ravine. Uh, Istria is very small, so from one side of the Istria to another side of the Istria, you can go in just a couple hours. Uh, so you can explore the whole region in just a couple of days. Uh, the next, it's also in eastern region it's called Pula uh, and we can see a huge uh, huge Roman influence here uh, because this amphitheater was built at the same time just uh, the same time as the Roman one so it's very well preserved over the summer if you travel to eastern region there is a uh, big big chance you will you will come across uh, many concerts that are happening there uh, it's a lot of events so it's a very uh, nice city to be and in, in it's very rich in history especially we can see a roman influence there uh, the next city is zadar which is my favorite part um, it's it's uh, close to split an hour and a half to split uh, also, Roman and Venetian ruins can be seen there. Um, a lot of churches, uh, Roman era form from 11th century. Um, also, the national park uh, Cornati, uh, which which I was mentioning with the islands, uh, it's just nearby. So the day trip that that uh, people take to go to that national park, it's from Zadar. Uh, the next is of course Split, and it's Diocletian Palace. Island of Hvar, uh, which is um, the most luxurious and the sunniest island in Croatia. A lot of high-end resorts, uh, a lot of nice beaches, great olive oil, and a lot of boutique wineries that that we take people to. So a lot of good uh, good dining. Uh, if you have a younger clients, it's a very lively island with a lot of beach bars, beach clubs. Uh, discotheques so it's very lively and it can be f it can fit anybody if you have upscale clients who want a more relaxed fine dining type of vacation it offers that on the other side if you have younger population who wants to go out have fun perfect for them as well island of Korčula uh, not as popular as island Hvar a um, little bit less crowded over the summers um, but it's it's if it's a very beautiful uh, city as well with 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 awesome old town uh, which is also walled as well um, and it this is the island that is believed to be the birthplace of Marco Polo. The last must see it's National Park Net, which I mentioned uh, before in in the natural wonders of why visit uh, Croatia as well. So. This is actually the map 
of Croatia, and I would like to I would like to uh, I would like to show you, for example, how if somebody if, if you have a client and he wants to he wants to visit Croatia, let's say, and he says that he has let's say he has uh, nine nights to spend in Croatia. So you come to us and we say, okay, what would you recommend? Um, of course, we would get a lot of inputs from you of their interest, their age, their fitness level. But let's just pretend um, they like food and wine. Uh, they're in, in mid fifties uh, and they like culture and just exploring places and historical sites. We would definitely have them have them land. We would definitely have them land in Zagreb. Uh, so we would have them land in Zagreb, which is the biggest uh, airport in Croatia. Spend one night there or two nights explore the Zagreb maybe go to to region of Zagreb where we saw the Trakoschan castle if you remember after that we would have private transfer if or they can do self drive if they want to Plitvice lakes which are located right here this would be one and a half hour drive to get here and after the park sightseeing we would take them down to Zadar for the overnight we would spend couple couple nights here in Zadar that is for sure uh, we would explore Zadar itself and we would also explore the National Park Kornati which are right here for a day excursion as well after that recommendation to go to Split on the way to Split definitely definitely stay definitely stay in Trogir uh, which I mentioned before it's UNESCO protection site uh, now after this uh, now after this we can have them we can have couple options actually we can have them take the ferry and go over to island of, of Hvar which is right here and then to Dubrovnik or we can have them stay in split for a couple nights and then go to Dubrovnik and maybe just do a day excursion to Hvar which is also possible by a private boat or we can do a group departure as well uh, this 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 type of itinerary you're probably talking about 10 days not to jump from hotel to hotel but to have more relaxed more relaxed uh, vacation if we are talking about 12 days then in between after the Plitvice lakes we will definitely add we will definitely add Istria region and have couple days here uh, we would most likely have them stay in Ravin which is right here and visit Ravine, visit Pula, do truffle hunting, uh, have a couple wine tastings, and then proceed down back to Zadar again. Uh, now, let's say you have clients who want to go Croatia, and and they also is asking you is asking you to um, let's say do couple extensions. What can I see if I go to Croatia? What can I see? Um, around it what other countries are there to see okay let's say they want to fly they maybe want to fly into Venice Venice it's right here we can have them fly in Venice stay two or three nights in Venice and then just take the ferry over to Pula or Porridge which is taking only three hours so only three hours it's enough to be from Venice to Croatia so Venice it's very good connected to the United States which makes it a very easy flight and then very easy ferry ride over to Croatia and then we would start their trip here so that is extension before or we can even end up here and then go to Venice to fly out both of the options work in Zagreb for example when I Zagreb we can do a day trip to Ljubljana which is in Slovenia or Lake Bled, which is an amazing site as well with its castle on the top. So this is possible too. So Bled is right here and Ljubljana is right here. All these can be due as a day trip from Zagreb. From Zagreb as a day trip, you can also do Hungary and Budapest, which is three, three and a half hours away, or we can do a two day extension to Hungary as well. Uh, once people are, for example, in, in, in Zadar or in Split, right here I don't know if you heard uh, but one of the best one of the best and most visited um, destination for church groups it's Medjugorje 
uh, it is believed that Holly Mary appeared there a couple of times. Uh, so a lot of church groups just go here, and this can be easily uh, this can this can be easily organized either from the Dar or from Split. Uh, people do it from Dubrovnik, but it's it's uh, it's a longer it's a longer drive. But people are doing it from Split and Zadar as well. Also, Mostar, Mostar, it's very uh, very popular destination because of its UNESCO protected bridge that's there, and also Sarajevo. Sarajevo, it's a little, it's it's not the best road. It's a little, I would say, uh, a longer, a longer, uh, like I would not recommend it as a, as a day trip. Uh, once we are in Dubrovnik, uh, we can we definitely want to have them go to Montenegro, which is right here. Montenegro, uh, we know there is um, there is a beautiful beautiful place called Kotor, which also is UNESCO protection site. It's a, a must stop for a lot of cruisers. So a lot of people go a lot of people go to Montenegro from Dubrovnik, um, and they and they either go for a day trip. Or, or they go for two days and three days. It's also possible. Um, they have they have couple things to see, so it's definitely possible to organize couple days there. They're not going to be bored a second. Uh, if we have if we have more days to spend uh, from Dubrovnik, we can have them go to Albania. I don't know how familiar you are with Albania, but I think this is going to be a very very um, interesting up and coming destination. Uh, it has amazing. Uh, UNESCO protection site, amazing history and culture, and if you're comparing it to Croatia, it has an amazing. I think it has better beaches because a lot of beaches are sandy beaches, and in Croatia are mostly rocky and pebble. So, beach destination, history destination, and amazing, amazing food. So Albania, if you wanna um, maybe suggest uh, something different to your clients, Albania is definitely a place. Uh, that I would recommend as as a day uh, as an extension to Croatia as well. Dubrovnik is also connected to to Greece to Athens with non-stop flights. So if you have people who are uh, who are in in Athens or are in Croatia and want to connect with Greece as well, that's also possible and very easy to do as well. Uh, I hope now you understand uh, a little bit about Croatia and. Uh, must see places uh, and how to actually get around um, just to just to make sure you understand like this is Eastern region that we talked about this is the continental part of Croatia this is Dalmatia right here which is of course most famous and most visited place of all uh, of the Croatia because of the the sea coast and the islands and and just the beautiful Dalmatian coast that we have I'm gonna move on um, about the recommendations on when uh, when to go uh, to Croatia. Anytime between April and October, really. Um, July and August are, are believed to be the high season and high priced and higher crowds. Uh, in May, June, and September, uh, the weather is still great, and this is the time that we would recommend uh, for the clients to travel. Uh, then there is September, uh, which for foodies and, and people who are traveling for food and wine, definitely September. Uh, grape harvest, olive harvest, truffle season, a lot of wine festivals, uh, and the most important thing, not that many crowds because Germans, Italians, uh, all the people who are traveling from nearby countries are gone. Kids are back in school. So this is great, great month to visit, especially if you're visiting after the 10th of September and on. Definitely, I recommend the best time to travel. We had a fam this uh, back September uh, about about that time from 17th to the to the 30th of September and it was just amazing weather uh, we only had one rainy day in Zagreb but other than that it was it was beautiful it was sunny uh, and it wasn't that crowded at all if you like I said if you have clients that are interested in traveling in winter Zagreb uh, definitely uh, and then we have winter Christmas market which starts in the beginning of December and it goes until I'm sorry, and it goes until around the 5th or 6th of January. So the whole month of events that are happening in Zagreb. Uh, 
our best sellers, um, what people are mostly looking for in Croatia and the region in general, definitely food and wine tours are best selling, um, active adventure, honeymoons, and a lot of sailing and Adriatic cruises. And when I say sailing and Adriatic cruises, I don't mean uh, booking a cabin on, 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 on a cruise ship, but actually getting a boat, getting a skipper or captain and just cruising the islands on your own uh, pace and your own itinerary that you put together before with us or with the captain on the spot. Like I said, we do uh, our services. We really try to be uh, different. We try to include unique local experiences. Uh, we we travel around the countries uh, that we cover all the time, just finding new things to do, uh, so we can offer it to our clients. So you, as a travel agents, can bring that extra value uh, to the travelers that I cannot find online, which is very very crucial to make the sales these days because if they can compare rates and they can compare the services to online travel agencies they don't need us so definitely the best way to show that difference is to offer something that cannot be found online and by working with us we can always find something special that your clients will be interested in of course depending on what they're exactly looking for in the trips I'm going to talk now about uh, our travel agent portal, uh, which which is actually updating right now and should be up and running shortly. Um, I'm going to give you a sneak peek into into the whole uh, into the whole system and how it looks and what can you do it. And so once you log in, you have to go on our website and uh, there's going to be a link to get the, the access code and the password. We have to approve you and after that you can access this portal. Um, what we do is first of all you can create you can create your user profile. And once you create once you create your user user profile and you can you will put your zip code your address uh, you will put your picture as well you are going to be featured on our website uh, we don't sell directly to to clients but we will start to promote heavily our products and once the people see the sample itineraries and they like what they see there's going to be uh, there's going to be a portion where it's going to say find my travel agent so they can search by zip code and they can find you if you're nearby it's because it's going to show the nearest travel agent and they will contact you through our system to make the booking for that particular itinerary which is giving you a new exposure which is giving you a new opportunity to to bring new clients uh, we have messages uh, we have messaging system right here where we where we can communicate all the time you can communicate with us uh, we can sh we can send we can send couple uh, we can send the news if you want uh, so just staying up to date uh, this is the best way to reach us if you're already have uh, if you already have the access to this uh, of course we will, we, will, you will, we will give you the access to to photo uh, to photo bank and um, here you will find over here you will find over 2,000 photos which you can use for your website, uh, you can use for for any promotional materials, materials for flyers. Uh, just you can get in, download. We have all the permissions to use the photos, so there's no legal issues with this, and just use them and market Croatia. Uh, here we are going to also put the videos that you can that you can uh, that you can download and use for your YouTube channel for your social medias as well. Uh, in content, uh, there's going to be the blog post that you can use. Um, we're just having created over 700 articles on Croatia. So once we put this all in, you can just copy and paste it to your website. You can rewrite it. You can do whatever you want with it, and you can use it in order to promote the destination better. Uh, sample itineraries here we put all the best of our itineraries of course this is just the samples that you can share with your clients but um, there are many many more uh, but these are the major and best-selling ones uh, so far uh, they're Croatia uh, Croatia and the region uh, Croatia and Greece so a lot of a lot of different combinations from five days to 18 20 days of Croatia uh, another thing that you can use in our travel agent portal is uh, it's the FIT app 
um, this is going to help you understand where you're actually sending your clients as well um, it's very easy to use you put in the dates um, if, if you are the dates flexible who is traveling uh, the destinations and itinerary you pick the destinations uh, for example and uh, it's gonna it's gonna show you on the map uh, how exactly is that itinerary gonna look like so you know where are you sending your clients as well um, then you can use uh, you can use uh, the transportation we can quote with a flight or without a flight uh, how you're gonna clients are gonna travel around is it gonna be private car is it gonna be public transportation is it gonna be a self drive so all these we can put in uh, the hotels uh, villas the apartments categorizations from five to four from three to five star what type of rooms uh, what clients prefer is it the resort style properties is it boutique style properties um, most valid amenities as well so this is just activities on each the destination uh, active soft adventure food and wine culture history nature so this is going to give us the great uh, input of what are your clients looking for and after you put this together you just click confirm and this is gonna this is gonna be sent to directly to our to our email and our sales representative is gonna be with you shortly uh, and most of the times we send out all the proposal done and ready in maximum 48 hours um, also we are gonna um, we're gonna have webinars uh, we already have two that you can watch they're going to be more in depth than this so for example this is just about food and wine and weather uh, so you can watch this one too uh, but there's going to be webinars coming in all the time so you can learn about the destination more um, croatian marketing kit this is something that's going to help you uh, get your custom materials so we would need your logo and your information and we can make you custom videos we can make you a flyer we can make you facebook cover we can make you website banners we can pretty much make any materials customized fully customized at no cost for you um, and it's it's going to be uh, done very in very professional way uh, with your logotype so you actually stand out with your promotional materials as well um, education tab here this is going to be this is going to be um, a Croatia specialist program which we are putting together and it should be live and running in just a couple of days we have everything ready and at the end of uh, at the end of the whole education process there's going to be uh, the little exam that you will take and after you take it if you pass uh, over 90 percent you will get uh, a little certificate from our agency that you are our our product specialist so this is something that we put together just a couple of weeks ago and um, agents who, who already have an access to it are using it heavily um, and I think it's really bringing the value and it's helping you promote and sell Croatia in a better in a better uh, and easier and easier way uh, this would be this would be it for me um, thank you very much guys for 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 taking the time uh, to be the part of this webinar uh, these are the content information uh, that you can that you can use to get in touch with me or with my team uh, and also this are my direct contacts which you can use uh, which you can which you can use to contact me directly uh, so I'm agents I'm sure some of the agents who are on this webinar already uh, already do work with us uh, already do work with us but they know how responsive we are and how fast we work so I really hope that we will have a chance to work with you as well we will uh, put this recorded webinar on our on our uh, travel agent portal so you can download it anytime anytime you want uh, thank you very much uh, Gabby is there something you want to add Yes, of course. Yeah, that's what I forgot to say. If you if you have uh, if you if you want to get in touch with us or with Gabriella, that's perfectly fine. We are a team here and we work towards the same goal. So even if you contact us or Gabriella, the word is going to come out to us. So it's really up to you who you want to contact first.